morning, everyone. Good morning. You're all very welcome. A special word of welcome to the parishioners from Pontypool Parish who come here to witness David being canonized. <laughs> It's a very good start. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pause for a moment in the gaze of the Lord and ask forgiveness for our own faults and our failings. I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, Pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
I now admit you as a member of the chapter of our Cathedral Church of St. David with the rights and duties of that office in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord in his mercy has appointed you to be joined to our chapter. We welcome you and pray for you that you may ever keep true love for your brothers and after this life receive the reward of your labors.
Let us pray. O God, who come, who by the immaculate conception of the Blessed Virgin prepared a worthy dwelling for your Son, grant, we pray, that as you preserved her from every stain by virtue of the death of your Son, which you foresaw, so through her intercession we too may be cleansed and admitted to your presence. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. After Adam had eaten of the tree, the Lord God called to him. Where are you? he asked. I heard the sound of you in the garden. He replied, I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Who told you that you were naked? he asked. Have you been eating of the tree I forbade you to eat? The man replied, it is a it was the woman you put with me. She gave me the fruit, and I ate it. Then the Lord God asked the woman, What is this you have done? The woman replied, The serpent tempted me, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, be accursed beyond all cattle or wild beasts. You shall crawl on your belly and eat dust, every day of your life. I will make you enemies of each other, you and the women. Your offspring and her offspring, it will crush your head and you will strike its heel. The man named his wife Eve because she was the mother of those, all those who live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. Sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. His right hand and his holy arm have brought salvation. The Lord has made known his salvation, has shown his justice to the nations. He has remembered his truth and love for the house of Israel. All the earth, ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, ring out your joy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all the spiritual blessings of heaven in Christ. Before the world was made, he chose us, chose us in Christ to be holy and spotless and to live through love in his presence, determining that we should become his adopted sons through Jesus Christ for his own kind purposes, to make us praise the glory of his grace, his free gift to us in the beloved. And it is in him that we were claimed as God's own chosen from the beginning, under the predetermined plan of the one who guides all things as he decides by his own will, chosen to be, for his greater glory, the people who would put their hopes in Christ before he came. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. He went in and said to her, Rejoice, so highly favoured, the Lord is with you. And she was deeply disturbed by these words, and asked herself what this greeting could mean. But the angel said to her, Mary, do not be afraid, you have won God's favour. Listen, you are to conceive and bear a son, and you must name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his reign will have no end. Mary said to the angel, But how can this come about? since I am a virgin. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, the angel answered, and the power of the Most High will cover you with its shadow. And so the child will be holy and will be called Son of God. Know this too, your kinswoman Elizabeth has in her old age herself conceived a son, and she whom people called barren is now in her sixth month for nothing is impossible to God. I am the handmaid of the Lord, said Mary. Let what you have said be done to me. And the angel left her. The Gospel of the Lord. One of the most beautiful features of this Cathedral of St. David's is the great west window above the main entrance to the church. It depicts the proclamation of the dogma of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. It looks beautiful from here. You're allowed to turn round and look at it. Do you see how vibrant the colours are? How wonderful the figures look? But if you went outside the doors, you couldn't see any of that. It's only when the sun shines, if the sun shines, and when the lights are on, that standing outside, you can see something of the glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The window comes to life when light shines through it, just like a tapestry or a mosaic, which are always worked from the back and only reveal their true beauty when they're turned round and the Creator sees the product of intense work and artistry which up till now has been a jumble of knots and confused colour. The different titles and devotions which we give to Our Lady and the different feasts that we celebrate in her honour are like a mosaic or a tapestry, each one interconnected with the other, and all of them together become what the theologian Hans von Balthasar once called a constellation of stars around her head, in close proximity to the morning star, the shining of whose light we await during Advent. Our great west window depicts Our Lady 
in the terms that St. John describes her in the great Revelation, Book of Apocalypse. A great sign appeared in the heavens, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve thorns, twelve stars in the constellation on a blue background. The twelve tribes of Israel, perhaps, twelve apostles, maybe, the flag of Christian Europe, I wonder. Ian Paisley certainly wondered and disliked the flag of Christian Europe very much because of its mariological overtones. Feasts, hymns, and litanies all try to express and explain the role of Mary in the history of salvation. She described by the church as the highest honor of our race. Mary is the one who listens, not just with her ear, but with her mind and her heart. Mary is the one who conceives Christ in her heart before she conceives him in her womb. And because of her contemplation, she is seen by the church as the model of personal holiness. She teaches us how to become a disciple, a, disciple, a learner, a listener, before we dare call ourselves apostles. Mary is the sign and symbol of everything humanity could have been in perfect harmony with the will and the life and the love of God. We call it paradise, the Garden of Eden. That's why she's described in the liturgy and theology as the new Eve, contradicting the disobedience of our first parents. In God's prevision, Mary is protected from the stain of that original sin because she would not contradict the revelation of God, the love of God, in the sin of pride, which as the poet John Milton once wrote, pride is the source and the origin of all the sins that are committed. Mary is also the sign and the symbol of everything the human race is. We are on our pilgrim journey through life as we struggle to make sense of its complexities and contradictions of its joys and its sorrows. Our Lady of Sorrows can speak to the homeless, the exile, the concerned parent. My son, why did you do this to us? Did you not know that your father and I would be looking for you? Standing at the foot of the cross, Our Lady of Sorrows can speak to all who suffer. Where is God? in the midst of human suffering. Here, says Jesus, with his arms outstretched on the cross. Mary, a sign and a symbol of what we all one day shall be. She, never separated from God through sin in her life, not separated from him in death either. We call it her assumption into heaven. The Orthodox call it her dormition, her falling asleep into the arms and the vision of God. It's also called the final judgment, which, as Cardinal Hume often used to say, was nothing more 
or less than us whispering into the ear of God those things we could never tell others about ourselves. Perhaps we couldn't even tell ourselves. Knowing who I am in the presence of God is the final judgment, realizing that in my life on earth, God wanted nothing but what was good for me, and I chose so many labyrinthine ways which contradict that goodness. It's a joy and a privilege to celebrate this feast of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, who is the patroness of our diocese. If it were possible to enhance that feast, the installation of a new canon into this capitular church will surely fulfill that purpose. The statutes of the chapter of canons read, priests who are of sound doctrine and life and who have exercised a praiseworthy ministry are to be appointed, appointed members of the chapter. The work of Canon David Heyman as diocesan chancellor has been, and I hope it will continue to be, outstanding and praiseworthy as a ministry. At the beginning, I spoke about the fragments of stained glass which make up the beautiful window spoke about the tesserae, the stones which make up the mosaic. I spoke about the strands of wool that weave a vibrant tapestry. David does even more than that in his ministry, in his work for people with broken marriages and fragmented lives. He helps them to put back together again the story of their lives so that each person, each couple, each parent can create something beautiful for God in their love for each other, in their care for their children and in building up a stable society because it is the family which is the bedrock of the future. Let us stand and profess our faith in the God who gives us his blessing. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried, descended into hell, Third day rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord the King, the of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the rest of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please now be seated for preparation the offertory
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously accept the saving sacrifice which we offer you, O Lord, on the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and grant that as we, as we profess her on account of your perennial grace to be untouched by the stain of sin. So through our intercession we may be delivered from all our faults through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you preserved the most blessed Virgin Mary from all stain of original sin so that in her, endowed with the rich fullness of your grace, you might prepare a worthy mother for your son and signify the beginning of the church, his beautiful bride without spot or wrinkle. She, the most pure virgin, was to bring forth a son, the innocent lamb who would wipe away her offenses. You placed her above all others to be for your people an advocate of grace and a model of holiness. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to a setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. And For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing this artificial victim by his death, your will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on his constant accession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confer in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you gain for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To the parted brothers and sisters, and to all are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, who bestow in the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to enter under my roof. Only say the word, my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ, Amen. The blood of Christ, Amen.
Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord our God, heal in us the wounds of that fault for which, in a singular way, you preserved the Blessed Mary in her Immaculate Conception through Christ our Lord. Amen. Can I thank our organist and singer for that beautiful music? Thank you as a congregation for coming and celebrating this precious moment. My congratulations to David on his installation to the cathedral chapter. You're very welcome. I think we can give him a tap. <laughs> One further announcement. Can I announce the new provost who is Canon John Kelly? <laughs> the Lord be with you. And, with you. and may Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace and love of Christ. Thank you.